Welcome to Spotlight Santa Monica. I'm Sandy Jacobson. Tongva Park, the new Pico Library, CityNet. These are just a few factors that contribute to Santa Monica being such a desirable place to live. Today you'll meet the people behind these projects. Dynamic parks, homelessness, well-being. The city's community and cultural services department is responsible for all of it and more. Joining me now is Director Karen Ginsberg. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, that's a lot. Community and cultural services. What does it do? What, do you, what does it mean? What does it encompass? Um, I like to think of it as people and places. We like to... Um, support the well-being of our people by focusing on them, them and, their, and the places, from the beach to the parks to public art to social services, we do it all. Mm -hmm. um, we provide recreational programs like the swim center or the tennis courts at Reed Park. Um, we provide uh, after-school programs at the schools and at uh, Virginia Avenue Park. We um, improve our public uh, parks and in the beach with capital improvement projects and we help the most vulnerable through grants to social service organizations. So let's start with parks. Okay. I know that you have the beautiful new Tongva Park and Ken Genzer Square across the street in the Civic Center. What can visitors expect when they visit there? Well I think visitors should definitely come take a visit. Um, bring your friends, bring a picnic lunch, hang out at the big, large picnic tables. We have two large picnic areas. Um, bring the kids, go down the big slides, the hill slides. There's a, um, a splash pad for children. And be certain to take a walk through the main pathway. That, through that pathway, you'll get the inspiration of the park, which is an arroyo. Um, the natural planting, the native plantings. And before you leave, get up to Observation Hill where you'll have commanding views of the ocean, Palisades Park, and even the pier roller coaster. And this uh, des was designed by a very famous designer who's done a park, the other probably most famous pa new park in the country. Yes, um, the High Line in New York. Mm -hmm. We work with James um, Corner Field Operations on this park. They were the lead designer for the park. And um, if you ever have a chance to go to New York and see the High Line, it's a renovated, uh, elevated railroad right. track. And so we have our own version of a, a spectacular park that people are going to travel from all over to see. Um, you mentioned that the, the, your department oversees the beach. So I know that you've recently opened a new playground. Tell us about that and any other improvements that are happening at the beach. Uh, in May, we opened the Universally Accessible Playground, which is um, way at the southern end of Santa Monica State Beach. And it's designed for children of all abilities. Um, it's uh, shaped like a big ship that's uh, landed in the sand. Um, you can take a slide, you just go on the swings, go on a glider. Children um, can experience sensory, all the senses mm -hmm. in this playground. Um, other things that we have in the works include uh, some additional walkways that will take you um, along that sand so you can trek out more uh, closer to the ocean. Mm -hmm. And um, we are rebuilding a restroom at the 2400 block next to Perry's. Where is this uh, playground area? The, the playground is at uh, 2800 Oceanfront Walk. So it's at the far southern end of Santa Monica State Beach, at the far southern end of the parking lot there. So the cross street would be Pico or uh, Ocean if Park? If you come down Ocean Park and you um, take a left uh -huh. and go into that first parking lot and go all the way to the end, that's, that's where, where the is. playground is. Um, one of the problems, or if you can call it that, has been on Palisa in Palisades Park. The fitness instructors all lined up. Now, there's new regulations about controlling that, isn't there? Yes. Um, on January 1st, um, two th 2014, uh, trainers who either have been or hope to operate a business in our parks or at the beach will be required to obtain a special permit. Um, to do that, in addition to their regular business license and other permits that they already obtain. Um, uh, these uh, fitness trainers will be regulated. Um, they will, it'll be an annual permit. 
In Palisades Park, there will be special regulations where uh, group fitness instruction will be limited to 15 participants only, um, specific in certain locations only. Um, none of that training will be allowed on Sundays in Palisades Park. Mm. Um, and uh, there are weight limits and um, fees that apply. Weight limits of the? Equipment. Oh, okay. I thought so. you meant of the people working <laughs> out. No, absolutely not. <laughs> That's why they're there. <laughs> I've heard you talk, uh, I've heard talk about the city's cra uh, Cradle to Career Initiative. Talk about that. What is that? We like to call it our C2C initiative, and it's a collaboration with the school district, the city, the college, and our community partners who work with uh, youth and their families in the community. And the idea is a collective impact idea where we are working together to um, ensure that children don't fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. um, Rather than isolated delivery of services, the idea is to collaborate and deliver services in a, a comprehensive manner. One of the first things that we're going to be launching soon is a new um, website portal where uh, parents and um, youth will be able to uh, put in a keyword such as um, homework assistance. And everything, every agency and organization that delivers homework assistance will, will pop up, both public and private. Well, will you register people to, to watch their progress or to make sure they're being covered by all the services that you have? Um, well, we have um, a YRT program, um, which is uh, geared towards um, uh, teens and their families. And through that program, we are working with specific youth um, to help yes. youth who um, may need that extra boost or connection. That's terrific. That's really good. And that's your part of your people thing. And I know the other part of your people thing has to do with the most vulnerable, as you call them. Talk a little bit about the homeless situation in Santa Monica and what you're doing. Well, um, we uh, support 23 agencies um, through grants in the community that serve our most vulnerable population. And um, uh, during the holidays, particularly, they get a lot of support from um, community members. Mm -hmm. But really, they need support year-round. Oh, yeah. um, we do have a, a special um, way people can get involved, however. On January 29th, um, we will be doing our annual homeless count. And we need over 200 volunteers to help us count the homeless and people who are sleeping on our streets in Santa Monica. This work helps us plan for the new year and also assess the programs that we have in place currently to see how we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you can get more information or sign up to be a volunteer by calling our Human Services Division um, at 310-458-8701. It, it will, is that to help with the safety net, as you say? Will there be training for these people to know how to count the homeless? Yes, yes. There is a training. It uh, basically begins at about 11 or 11.30 at night. Um, people go out in groups mm -hmm. um, very safely. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, and um, they're trained on how to, to do the work. It's really just accounting. Um, you're not interviewing the homeless or interviewing people or waking them up. Mm -hmm. It's really merely a count to see um, wh where we are and assess right. our, um, uh, our, our and progress. And how, how great the need is. Right. Karen, thank you so much for all you do, and thank you for coming and sharing it with us. Thanks for having me. For more information, please visit smgov.net slash ccs. Up next, did you know that Santa Monica Public Library is a five-star library? Stay tuned. Good morning, sunshine. If he were, he'd tell you, right? You're too healthy to be. He didn't look sick. What if you weren't safe every time? What if he's sleeping with his ex? What if it broke? If you are HIV positive, what happens next? You don't have to live with Mr. Doubt. Common Ground offers free testing and care for HIV and STDs, including hepatitis. Just stop by or call us. It's time you know. Experience Highway's Performance Space and Gallery. I knew my journey would lead me to a place where I'd find a highway that I could travel to the beat of my own drum. Right out the storm, 95 Joey died, but deadly was born. And there would be no limits to the vibrancy of my performance. Join us each week at Highway's Performance Space and Gallery and live without limits. Log on to highwaysperformance.org.
With more than one million visitors every year, the Santa Monica Public Library is a bustling hub of activity. Joining me now is Principal Librarian Susan Annette. Susan, nice to talk to you again. Thank you for inviting me. So I understand that the library got an award recently. What for? Well, we got a top five-star rating from the LJ Index for Public Library Services. Uh, they evaluated 7,500 libraries and 263 of us got stars. Wow. And this is the fourth consecutive year that we've gotten a five-star rating and we were the only California library to get that. I'm so impressed. Yes, <laughs> we were quite excited. And you should be excited. You're getting a new branch library opening up pretty soon. The what? Well, first of all, where is it? It's in uh, Virginia Avenue Park. It's very exciting because it's the first new library location in Santa Monica in 54 years. Wow, that's right, because the new main library replaced the old one. That's right. So what can we expect to see in the new library? Well, first of all, it'll have a brand new collection, 25,000 items, children's books, adult fiction, DVDs, CDs. Um, it will have a children's side, an adult side, 20 computers. Most branches uh, have open floor plans, so it, it will be very similar to the rest of our branches. Mm -hmm. But one thing that's different is that this branch will have a two-building design. It will have a separate annex or community room that will allow us to do programs as well as the public can rent it. The design is done by Koenig Eisenberg Architecture. They did the park, which oh. opened up in 2005. So it's been really wonderful to work with them because they know right. the they park did Virginia so well. Avenue yes, park. Yes, right. So uh, with people being able to download books and stream movies, what implication does that have for the future of libraries? Well, we've gotten very much into the downloadable book experience as well as audio book experience. People can download those from the libraries. The audios too? The audio books too. So there are about 4,000 in that collection, but the advantage to those collections is that you never have any overdue fines because you know once you're done with the reading, you can return it, and if you're not done with it, it checks it in automatically. It's, it takes it away from you? More or less, <laughs> yes. I know, you don't like, that sounds mean, I know, you don't like that. There was an interesting article of study about reading to young children. Talk about the benefits of reading to children. Well, it's a bonding experience between the parent and the child. It increases children's vocabulary, just the sound and the rhythm and the interaction. It gets them ready for kindergarten and academic achievement down the line. It can be a pleasurable experience so that they can get the lifelong reading habit of reading for pleasure. Mm -hmm. Well, how young are we talking about? You know, we have summer reading program for babies. Mm -hmm. So that when I'm in the park, you know, kind of handing out these brochures about summer reading program coming up, you know, people will look at in the carriage and say, too young, and I say, Absolutely not. We've got one for babies. They can do a music, a finger mm -hmm. play, just talking to the baby, reading from a picture book. So they're included too. Do you have picture books for babies? Oh yes. At the library? Absolutely. So I guess I've asked you this in another way, but why are libraries still important? I mean they go back to the last to the century before the Absolutely. last one. But why in this century? You know, Libraries are not only important because of the collections that they have, but the relationship that you can form with other people. So we always talk about the mission as being read, connect, relax, and learn. Hmm. So we have the collections, but we have programs. We do safety programs for kids. We work with the Santa Monica Police on that. We work with LA Opera to do an opera series every year that talks about the operas that are going on that season, but then ends up with a concert. Mm. We do um, our community reading program, Santa Monica Reads, and we've done that for 13 years in a row. Was that where the whole city reads the same Absolutely. book? Absolutely. So what book is it? 
Well, next year it's going to be, we got a grant to do the big read. So we're going to be reading um, Into the Beautiful North. So we'll be working on very much the same model, but we got funded to do it from the National Endowment for the Arts. Wow. So we're excited about that. That is great. You, you like to consider that libraries offer lifelong learning experiences. Is this what you're talking about or does it extend beyond that? Well, it, we talk about libraries as being lifelong learning experience for zero to, you know, seniors, very senior. Zero to death. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, we have some of our patrons are 98 years old and they're still walking to the library and they're still enjoying themselves. And you have to think a little bit that, you know, maybe that yeah, maybe that's maybe why they're 98 that's, years that's old. Why they're still coming to the library. Right. But, you know, it's, it's like I say, it's, it's a connection with other people. It's a good public space. And we try to have a friendly staff mm -hmm. that will offer to assist you with questions. For example, we've been doing a lot of programs lately with the Affordable Care Act. Oh, and Getting wow. that, you know. Uh, the word out on that a little bit more. So we've been doing that. Sa like I said, safety programs for kids. Not only that, safety programs for seniors. How to prevent falls, mm -hmm. um, concerts, readings, mm -hmm. author talks, it's all lovely. sorts of things. The uh, main library got the LEED Gold Award, the LEED Gold yes. Award, and I know you're shooting for a platinum on the new one. Talk a little bit about that and how valuable that is. Well, all. City of Santa Monica buildings are target getting a LEED rating. This will be, the platinum rating is the highest right. rating. What is LEED again? Um, it's uh, Leadership in Energy Environment Design wow. put out by the U.S. Green Building Council. Uh -huh. I may have gotten that acronym. Wrong. Well, I know, but the <laughs> idea is that yes, it has it, to do with the environment and the, sustainability and all of that. The health, the environment, and the conservation of resources over the life of the building. So uh, the Pico branch will have a cistern that, you know, processes gray water for, I think, you know, flushing the toilets or something like that. But there are all sorts of, it has a lot of natural daylighting. Mm -hmm. um, sun canopies to, so that there's some shade in the area. It has a white roof so that it reflects the sunlight and so it reduces what's called the heat island effect and reduces smog. And of course this building is going to have a wonderfully articulated folded roof. It's really going to be a oh, fabulous addition. Well we didn't have time unfortunately to talk about the fact that we can donate books. I know because I've driven up with a trunk full of books <laughs> and you guys were happy weren't you? Oh absolutely. About one or two thousand books are donated to the main library a day mm -hmm. and those that we don't add to the collection we pass along to our friends at the library for sale in their used bookstore. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge about the library and, and for all the exciting projects that are going on. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. For more on Santa Monica Public Library, please visit smpl.org. Up next, we're going to go high tech with the Information Systems Department. Stay tuned. Oh, hi, Rosa. Is it time for Mama to have our baby? No, sweetie, it's time for you to get a checkup. A checkup? Can I go, please? The services of women in Children's Hospital are integrated into the new LAC USC Healthcare Network, where superior medical professionals provide clinical research and complete patient care for your community. Ouch. Our staff is dedicated to you and your family. Something happened. I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't know there was help. Until someone told me. Providing access to justice, the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles can help with domestic violence issues, eviction defense, government benefits, immigration, and other civil legal issues.
The Information Systems Department does everything from providing Wi-Fi to offering programs for high school students. Joining me now is Broadband Program Ad Administrator Gary Carter. Gary, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. What is Youth Tech? We'll start there. Youth Tech. Uh, Youth Tech uh, is a program to cultivate the local talent uh, in the tech and um, in the tech area. So we have a lot of businesses and startups in the city, and uh, we would like the opportunity for those for our high school students to have the skills to obtain some of those lucrative careers. Um, it's it's hard skills, uh, technical skills that. Um, traditionally haven't uh, had the opportunity to really uh, be immersed in the uh, traditional curriculum. In the curriculum yeah. So um, it, it's just an opportunity for those students to get both that experience and also real world business professional skill development. So a little bit like having an internship? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. Um, and um, more focus on the skill development um, and mimicking the process of a startup. What's the age range you're shooting for? So we, when we started the first year, uh, we only allowed uh, seniors in the program. And uh, of course, there was a one 11th grade student that showed us that uh, 11th graders <laughs> right. should compete. Right. Um, and we had that same experience this past year. So now we're saying, OK, 9th grade through 12th grade is the age range. So anyone that's currently enrolled in high school, in a Santa Monica high school, um, they would attend during their summer. I bet some of these kids could put their peers to sh I mean, their, <laughs> their, their mentors to shame. Uh, yes, yeah, I, they, they, they learn really fast. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's been great uh, to see them uh, build their skills throughout that six weeks. So who's behind Youth Tech? Uh, it's a dedicated team of uh, city staff and uh, local business professionals. Mm -hmm. From local businesses, we have uh, both some of the tech startups, established entertainment tech companies, digital media. Uh, law firms, uh, wow. uh, graphic design companies, we have the, the whole gamut. And if it's a part of a tech startup, um, we have a professional locally here that's behind that curriculum. I, I keep thinking that those people are benefiting as much as the kids are. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great, uh, I think, life experience. And the first year it was, it was uh, somewhat difficult to get folks to, to understand what we're trying to, to accomplish. But as soon as they uh, presented once, mm -hmm. um, I, I, they, they, they always return. Yeah. They always return. Uh, what's like the timeline? I mean, how long is, are the kids in the program? It's six weeks. The, uh, the timeline is that we open up applications January 1st, um, and they're open until March 15th. And at that point, we interview them. It, again, it it's, uh, replicates a college admissions process and also a, um, your typical uh, professional recruitment. So there's interviews uh, that we have. Actually, a panel interview that we put these kids through. This is after they've done the program, or no? Or this is, is before, that before. Just to get admitted, there's an online application that includes essays. Uh, we invite them in to interview, and after that, after they have their panel interview, then we'll admit uh, 14 students. Oh, it's 14. It's, it's out of how many usually apply? Uh, it depends. We've had over 20, 30 sometimes. Oh, wow. uh, we, we'll see this year. Um, each year, it, the word gets out um, about the experiences that they've had. Um, it, it, yeah, I think the demand's going to continue and increase. I have a note here, something about pitch night. What's that? Okay, so yeah, throughout the six weeks, um, the, the first week they're learning city technology. Uh, uh, then they're five weeks, they're in a, a tech incubator here in Santa Monica. So they're working alongside true professionals that are starting up their company. Hmm. So they're networking and getting information from them. Um, the, the program actually culminates in pitch night where they pitch their idea, their startup, to a panel of investors and uh, entrepreneurs in the, in the community. And they actually get uh, rated uh, and only one wins. So one team wins oh. and um, you know we haven't had any get funded yet, but um, there have been some spinoffs. Uh, from the program. A little bit like fashion, um, runway fashion or whatever. I'm sure, project, yeah. Project runway. One way. I'm yeah. sure, yeah. Right. Um, so this gives them an in-depth look at how a city runs and how businesses run as well, it would seem. Yeah, so the the first week, it's, it's they, they learn a lot of, they learn pretty much all the city's technologies from some of the uh, public safety technology that's inside a, a police vehicle. Um, you know, the Wi-Fi and fiber optic network that we have, uh, the fire engine equipment, uh, all, this, all of this cool technology that uh, no one really has the opportunity to see. 
And what's also great is they get the experience of collaborating with peers, which really kids in high school don't get to do that much. True, yes, yes. And I think that's that's one of the, the greatest things. Project management also, they get the project management skills. Mm -hmm. They assign roles to their group. So there's a, a CEO, a CIO, uh, <laughs> there's a CFO, uh, and, and they're all really committed uh, during that process. That's great. Yeah. Well, and I always talk about something else you do called CityNet. What mm -hmm. is that? CityNet. So CityNet, it's it's a uh, advanced broadband program. Uh, it's an initiative by the city of Santa Monica to provide globally competitive speeds at an affordable cost. Um, I'm sure a lot of the, uh, the 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 residents know that um, the U.S. is is lagging behind in broadband speeds. Globally, uh, other other countries tend to lead us. So um, you know, our goal is to have the highest speed um, in, in in the world. So our network, it's the speeds that we offer, it's 10 gigabits per second. Um, currently, the average speed is, I think Japan ranks number one, around uh, a little shy of 160 megs, so 150 or mm, 60. That's a big, so, we have a long way to go. No, we're, we're actually faster now. Oh, we're, oh, we're faster, wow, we're faster, okay, yeah. Good. What yeah. does that serve? Uh, we currently serve businesses, uh, anyone, any business uh, in the city. We, we only service commercial buildings to date. Um, there are uh, costs involved, involved with uh, connecting to our network. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the ROI tends to be for uh, businesses at the current moment. Um, but we are, we are uh, obviously uh, knowledgeable about uh, the things that Google Fiber has done for other communities. And uh, I know our, our residents were behind uh, that initiative when the opportunity was there. So we are looking at things like that. So how has the city benefited, actually? Uh, it's benefited. Uh, it's been a, a, a good economic development tool. Uh, it's attracted some tech companies. Um, you know, it's if you're going to host a service uh, or host a tech company, you need the infrastructure. And uh, for those types of companies, those costs can exceed even their square footage cost for the space. Um, I, I've I've witnessed uh, a group of three to five people in a startup transition to a 200 employee company within wow. the city, and um, they started with that five people, but they needed at that at when they started the company, they actually needed at least 100 megs, which is our our, our minimum, mm -hmm. which is uh, 10 times what I think the average business was getting prior before to us that. before our program. So, is. what's next for CityNet? What's next? Um, I, I think to try to uh, we would like to service every building in Santa Monica, every commercial building, and look and see other ways that we could help other residents get the speeds that they need. Um, we will continue to increase our speed. Um, and, and to make sure that we're the fastest, um, and also look at any other products or services that we can offer to help you know, not only the tech companies, but you know, other businesses as well. I bet a lot of people in Santa Monica didn't know this was available. Thank you for sharing this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been great, and it's been great to uh, actually get a chance to work with the businesses here in Santa Monica and um, get, provide them something that they think is, is, is a myth, right. and uh, it turns <laughs> out to be true. <laughs> true. Yes. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you, Sandy. It's nice to be here. For more information, please visit sfgov.net slash ISD. Thank you so much for watching Spotlight Santa Monica. Join us next time for more of the people and departments that make Santa Monica such a desirable place to live. Bye for now.